to imply that simple external factors could influence your personality is a subtle way of telling someone you're simple minded. Because if you yourself can describe your actions in any scenario, that means you admit to having scripted responses to external stimuli. Therefore, you encourage your own lack of free will, and society encourages it too, and celebrates it. If one can observe oneself in different scenarios, essentially to be conscious, implies the existence of a self doing the actions and an observer watching and analyzing the self. And if the observer is able to completely understand the self and describe it in simple terms, then the self is not a major enough player in their lives. It's simple and scripted, easily understood, predictable, average, programmed. If anything, it means the self is small. Because if the observer is able to understand more and more of the self, then that means the observer is either much more powerful than normal or the self is much smaller and much less active than normal. And just about everyone's observational lens of themselves is about the same. We all fall prey to the same biases. We're all on about the same page. We're all able to tell each other jokes poking fun at ourselves. We're all able to play games together and talk about each other, and give advice to each other. Our observers, our observational lenses of ourselves, are all just about as equally smart as each other. This can only mean one thing. If you describe yourself easily with simple descriptive words, things like I'm vegan, or I'm black, or I'm a woman, or I'm a Virgo, and if you truly believe that your personality is simple enough to where you can tell someone such a simple word and they can understand your personality and they would be right making judgments and stereotypes, it means you yourself understand that you don't have free will. It means you're choosing to conform to these labels. If you want to have a stronger sense of self, don't allow yourself to be described under simple labels. If you say to someone, I'm black, and that should tell you everything you need to know about my personality. That's literally racism. That's literally making yourself a sheep. That people can make assumptions about you and predict your behavior because of your race. And you confirming that they would be correct is basically encouraging their racism. You can't apply any of these labels to me, though. I mean, you can. You can say that I'm Indian, but if you were to guess my behavior and my actions based on the knowledge that I was Indian, my actions are far too complex for people to guess just from that simple piece of information. So labels to my life have, maybe they have a lot of meaning, but they have much less meaning than a lot of other people who talk about themselves, oh, I'm very into astrology, I'm very into this thing or whatever. They apply more and more and more labels to themselves. And the more arbitrary the personality traits that are associated with that label, the more controlled those people are who prescribe themselves to those labels. And the more they apply those labels onto other people, the more they apply labels in general to other people. Like labels like man and woman, that's a reasonable label to apply. I mean, I guess for me, you know, because there is a difference between a man and a woman. And that is a distinction to be made. And if, if someone knows I'm a man, then they can much better predict my actions than if they think I'm a woman. Okay, they, they, they would be right the majority of the time predict my actions. But um, to things that are very arbitrary, like skin color or whatever, if these labels still apply, then that just means you're conforming to whatever people think the label should, should be. And these are the kinds of people who are also so simple-minded that they also project and they can't view other people as complex individuals. And so they view 
everything as group identity and social justice and, you know, um, the actions of a few in one group will dictate the justice that should be enacted on the whole group. And they'll apply these labels onto other people. And that's why on the complete opposite end of the weakness spectrum, people who are very, very strong, who are like, you know, who try to put on a face like, oh, I'm much stronger than they actually are or whatever. They don't apply labels at all. Like, at, at, like they, they literally, like you'll see people like Andrew Tate people, they'll be like, oh, depression isn't real. Don't label yourself as depressed. And maybe you can make the argument that labeling yourself as depressed isn't going to help you with your depression, but to dismiss labels entirely, whether that's good or bad is out of the, is irrelevant, but it's on the complete opposite end of the spectrum and you'll find it in the complete opposite end of the spectrum of people. And those are the people that labels don't necessarily apply to like that. Now, regardless of whether or not this, this removing labels from your life, regardless of whether or not this, this is a good strategy for building your sense of self, if you want to lower your sense of self, right? And you basically want to feel more depressed um, and you want to feel more pathetic and feel weaker. A good strategy to do that would be to apply more labels to yourself. And not only should you apply more labels, you should also try to assign value to these labels, like stereotypes and predictable behaviors, um, such as like, like being gay is a personality and things like that. Like, oh, I'm gay and whatever. And so like, and if you expect people to, you know, cast judgments onto you, whether positive or negative based on that, then that's a, that's a real good strategy to become more pathetic or at least view yourself as more pathetic, right? Because if being gay is such a major factor in your personality, sorry to tell you, you don't have much of a personality. Actually, I'm not sorry, but by applying these labels, it also creates a self-fulfilling prophecy and it's likely to come true then. It makes you less free. When people are happy, they smile. But it's also true that smiling will make you feel happier. If you force yourself to smile, it will literally make you feel happier. And see, here's the thing. When people apply labels onto, onto themselves and other people, it may, it's a self, it's a cycle, it's a cycle. It'll dehumanize them and also being feeling more dehumanized will push people to apply more labels onto themselves and others. And and this is like a it's it's such a it's such a common sense thing. It's such a common sense thing that's like I I remember seeing this one clip of like um people try to people try to take words like there's certain people that that want to influence language, they want to use words to their advantage, so they'll take certain words They'll apply a negative or a positive connotation to them and they'll just assume, they'll just basically give it to the rest of society and tell them it has a negative or positive connotation. And the sheep of society, the NBCs of society would be like, ah, yes, if I want to fit in and virtue signal and I don't want to be seen as a bad person, I must conform and be like, yes, this is a bad word. And so they'll automatically, they'll, they'll play into it and they'll be a part of the army, you know, basically, right? They'll be a, a part of basically like trained army slaves, like fucking robocops. Like, that's literally what these people are, um, except, you know, well, I guess they are kind of cyborgs now with their phones in their hands in front of their faces all the time. Um, and these algorithms just controlling their behavior, giving them the illusion of free will. But I remember seeing this clip of like, uh, it was like Andrew Tate and somebody was going like, hey, Andrew Tate, don't you have a cult? And everyone's like laughing in the call or whatever, like, hey, bro, he has a cult. And he's like, no, it's not a cult. And he described like his like fan base, basically, he's like, it's, it's a group of people who really resonate with what I'm saying, who want to show support, who want to change their lives, who want to do these things, and I'm giving them advice. And the person was like, but isn't that basically a cult? And then the clip ended, like, trying to, the clip was like trying to make fun of Andrew Tate. It was like, hey, isn't that a cult? And then the clip cut off right there um, as like a joke, you know? But it's like, people, the response should be like, hey, isn't that a bad thing? Or the response should be, hey, isn't that dangerous? Or is, is that a good thing? Is that really a thing that, that should be celebrated? People don't have these arguments, though. They have the arguments on whether or not it's a cult. 
because everyone just assumes, oh, it's a cult, then it's bad. If you can apply the label of cult to something, then everybody will just agree. Oh, yeah, it's bad. It should, it should be taken away. If I can, like, watch, I'll go to any, any influencer, right? And I'll go, I'll, I'll make an argument that they, their fan base is actually a cult. And I'll see if they can argue against me. And you know what? Against 99% of all these influencers, I'll win. And I'll label them and their, and their fan bases as cults. Whether or not I actually think it's a good or bad thing is irrelevant. Um, and you know what? I don't think it's such a bad thing. But I can apply a label of a cult to it. And people just take that and they go, ah, yes, these words have so much meaning. These labels have so much meaning. It's like the word misogynistic, dude. It's like um, people will say genuinely good things. Like they'll, they'll, they'll literally talk about like improving themselves and their lives and the world around them. But because they'll say something that may uh, paint females in a bit of a weaker light. And so you have to take care of females, you have to protect them or whatever, or you have a responsibility to make sure that um, the way the way that you treat females is, is literally by default with more respect than the way you treat men. Like when these same people, these same people like Andrew Tate and all of them would be like, yeah, I don't give homeless, I don't give uh, money to homeless men, I give money to homeless women. Like these people who literally respect women more than men, they'll be labeled as misogynistic. Whether or not the thing they're talking about is good or bad, people would just go like, yeah, they're misogynistic. And then you go in public and you go, hey, uh, what do you think about Andrew Tate? Oh, I hate him. Why? Oh, he's misogynistic. They don't even know anything about him. Um, and so that's, that's literally, that's what I have to say about labels. It's people, labels are an excuse to not think. That's what it is. Labels are an excuse for people to, to for people to be like, yeah, I don't want to think in this situation. I, I want to have the pleasure of having opinions without going through the pain of thinking. That's what it is. And in that way, I, I, I view pain as a very valuable process to achieving that pleasure. Um, and it's something that can be avoided in today's society, but I don't think it should be. I think there is, at least from my my own personal moral perspective, to be a good moral paragon for myself, to, to look up to myself and to be proud of myself, if I'm going to hold the pleasure of holding opinions, if I'm going to experience that pleasure, I want to hold myself accountable and experience the pain of thinking it through first. Um, to one extent that I actually do that compared to the average person or compared to the person who really, really thinks it through um, is I don't even think all that relevant. I'm going to do it to where I feel satisfied with it. And so will other people.